Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm Dr. Mark Hyman, and I'm thrilled to be here today to have a conversation about one of the most important topics in healthcare today, which is food as medicine. Food has the potential to both cause and cure most chronic diseases, and over 11 million people die every year globally from not eating the right foods and too much of the wrong foods. It's a bigger killer than smoking or anything else. 88% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy, which means they have high cholesterol, blood sugar, or blood pressure, all caused primarily by bad food and not enough good food. And today, we're going to talk about why it's so important for us to think about how we can pay for the right treatments for patients with chronic illness. If food is the biggest cure and the biggest cause, then we have to fix food in order to solve our chronic disease problems and our economic burden from those chronic disease problems. And today we have an extraordinary group with us, Congressman McGovern, Jim McGovern, who is a hero of mine personally, who has been tirelessly fighting the fight to reform our food policy for decades and decades. He was first elected from uh, uh, Massachusetts in 1996. He's the chairman of the powerful House Rules Committee, which decides uh, the bills and the amendments that come before the House of Representatives for debate. He's also the chairman of the Congressional Hunger Center, and he's tirelessly working to end hunger. He's also uh, the leading author of the George McGovern Bob Dole International Food Education Program, which gave nutritious meals in school settings over 9 million poorest people in the world. And in the United States, he is increasing food assistance programs during COVID and is launching a food as medicine working group. Thank God there's a food as medicine working group in Congress. I hope there are 600 members, right, Jim? I, I don't know. <laughs> is there? It should be anyway. <laughs> I think I can know most of them. Uh, and uh, he's really focused now on something really important we're going to talk about today, which is medically tailored home delivered meals to vulnerable seniors through Medicare. This is this cannot be understated. We know that food has the potential to cure and to reverse so much chronic disease and prevent so much of the costs associated with their crippling our healthcare system. Uh, he's also received for his amazing work the 2016 James Beard Foundation Leadership Award uh, and a 2008 George McGovern Bob Dole Leadership Award from the World Food Program. So we have my hero, Jim McGovern, Congressman from Massachusetts, which is my home state. We also have a uh, Dr. Prakash Patel, who's a uh, doctor as well as I am, and who's been a leading industry expert in a broad range of healthcare situations, including healthcare plans, government programs, behavioral health, and complex care management with a proven record of really improving health outcomes. Because, you know, medicine is not like if you take your car to the, the, the mechanic and, and you pay them and the car doesn't work when you take the car home, uh, you know, it's not good that you probably won't pay the mechanic. In healthcare, we just pay for what doesn't work or it does work, we don't really have a metric. And he's tr trying to show how we can pay for value for outcomes. Uh, he's served as the executive vice president and president of Anthem, Inc.'s diversified business group. Anthem is a big insurance company as well. Guywell and Florida Blue and Magellan Health, lots of top leading healthcare payers. And he is lead healthcare operating executive um, at Growth Curve Capital and co-chairman of board of directors of Performance Kitchen, which is a meal delivery program. And of course, last but not least, uh, many of our heroes, Hall of Famer, David Ortiz, nicknamed Big Poppy, who I got to see in person with my son, which made him big smile. He's a Dominican American, former professional baseball player, a designated hitter and first baseman who played 20 seasons in the major league uh, for the Boston Red Sox, uh, my Massachusetts home team, thank God. 10 time all-star, three time world series champ, seven time silver slugger winner and 2022 <laughs> major league baseball hall of fame inductee. And more importantly, more importantly, I think uh, you are taking a stand for health in the world and particularly in America and particularly in your communities, which are, are disproportionately affected by this problem. Yes. And it's also something in your family. Your dad has diabetes and, uh, and you are also an ambassador for Performance Kitchen. So I think you're really committed to this. I'm so happy to be doing this with you. And uh, let, me, uh, let me sort of jump right in uh, and I will get sort of to the bandwagon, you know, you know, what does food as medicine mean? I, I think people think, oh yeah, it's food as medicine. It sounds good, but is it actually medicine? It actually is medicine. There are literally compounds in food that can heal disease. The quality of the food really matters. And dozens and dozens of studies have showed that actually eating a healthy diet reduces healthcare costs dramatically associated with chronic disease and improves overall health and wellness. And, and actually shows a three to four X return on every dollar spent which is important because now we're up to $4.1 trillion per year in healthcare costs of 20% of our GDP. 
And chronic disease accounts for about 90% of that. And most of chronic disease is caused by food and can be cured by food. And, and just a few little data points. I mean, uh, this, is, this is work out of my colleague, uh, Darish Mazafarin, who's uh, the Dean of the School of uh, Nutrition Science and Policy, uh, looking at simple, what would it take if we, if we just took Medicare, Medicaid and had healthy food prescriptions? This is not even medically tailored meals where you're providing the whole meal. You're just like giving prescriptions and you're in, ensuring about 30% of the cost of eligible food, which is whole healthy food. We would save $100 billion over uh, the, the, the population's lifetime. It would be cost effective in five years. We'd have 120,000 less cases of diabetes, 3.28 million less cases of heart attacks. And it's more cost effective than any current treatment available, any treatment available. I, I had a patient who was type two diabetic, heart failure, heart disease, obese, on insulin. Her copay was 20,000. <laughs> Within three months, she was off all her meds and reversed her diabetes. In a year, she lost 116 pounds we, with food alone. We, we know how to do this. And I think, I think this is unfortunate that, that doctors aren't learning about this. I talked to my daughters in medical school. I said, are they getting any nutrition classes? Like, no. I think it's because the testing, which is what they do the curriculum based on, doesn't include nutrition questions. It doesn't include microbiome questions. So we're a little out of date in medicine, and I think we really are, are going to get there. And one last thing before we sort of jump in, I just, I just want to reference the Geisinger study, which was a, a, a trial that was done in Geisinger, Pennsylvania. It's a closed system. There, uh, there was a, a number of very, very sick food insecure diabetics and they gave them meals for a year. Uh, I think it was $2,400 plus coaching and some support. They saved an average of 80% per patient from about $248,000 a year per patient to about $48,000 per patient. That's over $190,000 savings simply by giving them $2,400 of food a year plus a little support. Now that should be federal policy. It should be state policy. And it's basically ignored. And yet Medicare is crippled. One third of Medicare dollars is covering diabetes, which is a food borne illness. So we need to fix this. And I think the work that all of us are doing is really helping to sort of create the conversation where we can really reimagine a form of healthcare that includes uh, the right kinds of, of food and healthcare uh, as, as, as really a very effective strategy for reducing the healthcare burden, reducing chronic diseases, and actually um, ending up saving enormous amounts of money. So let's jump right in. I, I wanna start uh, with um, David, uh, because I think you're, you're really, uh, uh, and, and, you know, have a personal experience of this in, in terms of your family and other things. So, so tell us, David, how, how has your diet changed over the years? Being an athlete, you know, I, I've been in locker rooms and 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 and, and, and like the, that the Patriots and other places. It's scary what professional athletes eat. I mean, if you had a million dollar racehorse, you wouldn't feed him fries and burg fried chicken and burgers and junk food, right? But that's what we feed our players. So how how has your diet changed, and how has being a professional athlete affected your diet and maintaining your health and fitness today? Uh, and also, uh, we'll jump after that into talking about your family history with diabetes. Yeah. Well, first of all, hi to everyone. Uh, in my case, as you go, as you guys know, uh, uh, as an athlete, you basically became to be uh, uh, a professional nutrition because you got to take care of yourself. You got to make sure that whatever you put in your body uh, um, is the right thing to do. That's the only way you can have a long career like the one that I have. Uh, mm -hmm. In my case, at the beginning, when I was in my 20s, I wasn't paying much attention. But once I jumped on my 30, I was like, wait a minute. When I was like 32, 33, I was like, if I want to play into my 40s, I better start changing things around. And that was when I started paying really good attention to my diet. I dropped 30 pounds. I, and, and that guaranteed me another eight years in the league. And, and you know, it, it, it's something that once you start paying attention, you'll be like, wow, because sometimes people have no patience to see the result. 
and that's when people get caught off in in any type of situation. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, nutrition it have to begin to be, you gotta you gotta look at it like a lifestyle, so you can have fun with it and you can follow up with the real thing. Like I have my man Prakash, who. Uh, uh, we've been partnering and, 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 and friend, and we've been talking about this type of situation for a long time. And listening to Prakash, myself, and with my man and the whole group, we have learned so many things that me, that I have a father that he is diabetic. And once you know that it runs in your family, you start paying even more attention to it. And listening to uh, what Prakash had to say, what you, Mark, I, I, I follow you big time. Oh. I, I, trust me, you have no idea how much <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of you. Thank you. Uh, I watch you all the time, and, and trust me, you are the real deal. And, you, and, and listening to what you guys had to say is something that had encouraged me a lot into the nutrition and, and the things that I you know what I do, you know, I'm like when I first got into this business, uh, through Dog Out Adventure and then Performing Kitchen, you are focused on the business side of it, but also you want to give back to the community. Also, you want to help. You want to do things that, that uh, in the long run, you can see the result. Like I, I, I emphasize it with my dad. I emphasize it with myself, my family. I was part of, when we first came out with the uh, food menu down in Miami uh, to the uh, performing kitchen, uh, I was very involved with the flavor and the thing because uh, um, Spanish people, we are more of the flavor type of thing to follow up with things than anything else. If you don't put flavor on yeah. their food, trust me, you're not yeah, going to yeah. be successful for it. Because that's the that that's how you play with your brain. That's how you get yeah. your brain used to things, just oh, to begin good. with. And I was very involved in it, and and people got what was fascinated with with uh, the flavor and the thing. But the most important thing, healthy. And uh, like I said, you know, I'm a guy that I love giving back to the community. I love result. I love seeing. Uh, 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 especially uh, our senior uh, to see, to, to, to provide something that can give them a longer life. Uh, my dad had diabetes for the past 20 years since we find out about it. And I'm always on top of my dad, you know, with things the way we can have him here longer. And at the end of the day, that, those are the things that I, you know, care about. And trust me, I think I got, the best professor in the business, which is you, Mark, and my man, Prakash. I mean, I Aww. love when you guys you. Have to go out Thank and you. say <laughs> things, you know, uh, uh, the way so uh, uh, we can continue, you know, moving forward and and uh, and emphasizing a lot in the nutrition and what you got to put in your body and, and the way your body can stay healthy longer. And, you know, I mean... Uh, Jim, Mr. Congressman, I, I'm I'm very pleased with the things that uh, is coming from the governor when it comes down to invest in in, in, in in nutrition. Because at the end of the day, what I have learned about this medicine, we call medicine to so many different things, but but the real medicine we are the one who created, it, and it's when you put good food in your body. That's going to be the end of the day medicine because that's what, what's going to provide uh, 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 durability and quality. You know, once you start eating well, once you start eating healthy, you're not going to have to, like my dad had to take so many medications yeah. for the diabetes so he, can so, so he can create a balance in his body. But why is that? Because when my dad was younger, I remember how my dad used to eat and how my dad used to go out of that thing, and it'll catch up towards the end. Some people, yep. uh, unfortunately, it'll catch up on them earlier than some other, but at the end of the day, it's the same result. Yeah. So I, I, I'm a big fan of what Prakash and Mark 
uh, I bring to the table. And I think I had talked too much. I'm going to let you guys. No, your, your, your voice is so important. And, you know, your personal experience with this is your own health and your father's health and your community's health and trying to find food that tastes good and is good. You know, it's, it's a false dichotomy between, you know, food that is good for you and is going to taste bad versus food that's good for you and going to taste good. So you're right. It has to be yummy and it can be. And I think, you know, people don't understand how delicious good food can be. And if, 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 um, you know, you're, 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 you're talking about diabetes and your dad, it, it's such a big problem. It's like one third of Medicare expenditures are for diabetes, which is a hundred percent reversible. And, and I just, you know, quickly, there's a other people outside of the traditional healthcare space have figured this out and, and they, a company called Verta health, which I don't have any relationship to, but they, they basically created an online platform for putting people on a ketogenic diet with type two diabetes and reverse diabetes, which is by the way, something you not learned in medical school, you don't reverse diabetes. They reverse diabetes type two in advanced diabetics, 60% of them, 90 plus percent got off their insulin, 100% got off the main diabetes medication and average weight loss was 12%, which is usually three times what you see in a normal study for weight loss. So it works and, and it's, a, it's fixable and it's not, not like we have to reinvent the wheel. So thank you, David, for being part of this and using your voice and your you're following to actually uh, help this move forward. Um, now I'd just like to move over to Dr. Patel, uh, who has become a good friend, and he is deep in the world of insurance and payers uh, and understands this, his work for Blue Cross, his work for Medicare Advantage and, and Anthem. And, and, and so tell us what's happening in the food space. What's the vibe and what are they doing? Do they get it? And, and what are other benefits that, that actually happen with meals? Port that is just beyond better clinical care that payers would see. Words, how do we convince people who are writing so, the checks to write the checks for the right thing as opposed to the wrong thing? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, it's great to be on this panel with the three of you. It's uh, it's an impressive group of people. I'm, I'm honored to be on it. And David, um, congratulations on being elected to the Hall of Fame. Um, I want to tell you, though, and I like to think that. Thank you. Thank you. I want to just say this, David, though, before my injuries, I want to believe at least that I was on my way to becoming the first Indian major leaguer. I just want you to know <laughs> that, that may be a little bit of a stretch, but you know, I would have chosen health care anyway. Come on. It's more. Exciting. Well, I don't know about that. I, I was always the last guy chosen for the team. So I had no hope. I had no hope. Yeah, but, but congratulations and your voice and Mark, you said it so well. Um, you, your personal story is very important. And, and the following you have, people look up to you for all the right reasons. I mean, you, 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 you know, followed the word uh, with your actions and uh, there's not a lot of people like that. So, you know, really kudos to that and obviously kudos to being elected to the hall. And, you know, I just want to comment, Mark, and I'll get to your question just very briefly. You know, David alluded to the way we came together and, and it's true. Um, you know, ultimately, it's David, you, myself, Mark Hyman, we're all, Dr. Hyman, we're all working together. But it really started uh, with Mark Walker, who's the co-chair with me on, on Performance Kitchen. He called me a couple of years back and he described how, just as you two described, you described some of those studies, you know, Mark, it's how, in his case, Performance Kitchen meals had dramatically improved his health. And, you know, we really agreed we wanted to be part of this, really creating a new market, this uh, food prescribed as any other medical intervention, but without all the adverse effects. And the only big caveat I gave Mark is, look, we have to be patient. You know, you're, 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 you underscored this a little bit, Mark, you're getting folks to pay for it. It's not that they're, they're not paying for it. It's coming. We have to continue to push the, the message as we're doing here. Obviously, Congressman McGovern's bill is going to help as well. Um, it's the ROIs. It's getting these stories out there and codifying them. Um, but I did tell Mark that, look, we're, this is going to happen, but you just have to remember health plans don't always, you know, move, move the fastest. That's something we just have to realize. Now, back to your question, you know, what are Medicare Advantage plans doing? You know, today it's important to put this in perspective. Uh, about 50%, almost half of all seniors are now in Medicare Advantage plans, and they have the ability to offer supplemental uh, benefits like, uh, like meal food benefits and interventions. And today, half of these plans do offer meal benefits. The big caveat, however, is most, the vast majority only do it for a week or two and usually only after post-hospital discharge. So they're missing that full window. And look, even Big Poppy, I mean, listen, even Big Poppy couldn't hit all those homers with just 25 meals in a year. He couldn't even bunt with 25 meals. 
So it's crazy. It's crazy. I just want to interrupt for a second, Prakash, because what you said is so important. Okay. <laughs> if we know food is medicine, right? It's, and it, it was, someone needs a, a drug for cholesterol. We don't say take it for three yeah, weeks, weeks and then stop right. it. It's yeah, like, no, right. this is something you need. And by the way, food works way better than all that. So it's just, it just without doesn't the, make Without sense. the adverse effects, right? Without all the other things that we have. Well, all the side effects are all good ones. <laughs> and they're all good. Exactly. And, and you know, I think the real opportunity, and it's really where you're going, Mark, is that I think the Medicare plans in particular, but this is true beyond Medicare plans, the real opportunity is start to meet the members in their whole person needs, as opposed to their disease state, which is what our whole system is set up for. And, and you can start with the folks with chronic conditions because the vast majority of Medicare members have at least one chronic condition. They're the ones that need these long-term 90 day plus meal supports that really do positively uh, impact health and more. And, and just to give a little bit more details, today there are a million and a half million Medicare uh, health plan members that are already eligible for these long-term meal interventions. And obviously with Congressman McGovern's bill, I think these critical interventions are just you know, gonna get expanded, we hope obviously, and help so many others that need it. And Mark, you know this better than anyone else on this planet. Although we don't learn about it in medical school, I think providers like yourself, and, and you've been such a great voice and leader in this whole space, you've known, many providers have known the, the, the connection between food and medicine and healthcare. And I think what we've been missing in part is yes, the, the payments, which now are coming, you're, you know, half the health plans are offering these now, these, these benefits, we have to do it for longer, but we also needed easy ways and efficient ways to prescribe these medically, uh, you know, deliver meals. And I think that's what Performance Kitchen is trying to do. Oh, great, gosh. And, and, and in, your, in your sense of things, you know, you're working with, uh, you know, Medicare Advantage, is there an interest, you see these payers like now wanting to do this, thinking about longer term, meal delivery, I mean, because Medicare, Medicaid tend to move slowly, but are you seeing the private sector actually drive this more? Yes, yes, and look, it's a partnership. This is, this is something that we can do on both fronts. And I, that's, again, back to Congressman's uh, approach here, which I think is gonna be very helpful. Uh, CMS has been a leader in so many areas, uh, and, and we in the private sector are following. I think this is an example where we can lead more. Uh, and you know, with, the, with the ability in 2020 to offer these uh, additional supplemental benefits like meal and, and other like transportation, other things, you know, above and beyond the dental and vision that we would be able to do for several years. I think these are all the right movements. And you know, I'll just add this, and then I, I think, I know we want to keep to time here with Congressman, but I think the other thing that's helping, Mark, is we're seeing the impact beyond cost. So the, the meal support goes beyond reducing medical costs especially with those who have chronic condition, it's a tremendous member engagement approach in a very personal way. So what does this mean? This means that, for example, it uniquely enables uh, performance uh, kitchen nutritionists and dietitians uh, to address social drivers of health. And you know, we've talked a lot about this in the past as well, including access to quality food. How do you evaluate food you know, impact on improving medication adherence? There's that connection as well. And ultimately, you know, how do we make sure that we have better retention, better long-term uh, relationship with our members, improve the experience and really reduce that churn? And that helps the payers as well, because when you have a longitudinal relationship, you're not thinking about that six month, nine month, 12 month, you yeah. really are thinking about that whole person over a longer period of time. So I think that's what these meal, these medically prescribed meals over a longer period of time have that ability to make that kind of impact. I mean, it's clearly the right thing to do medically, and it's the right thing to do economically. And I think, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of congressmen, senators, the White House, I've been around the rounds there. I'm like, oh, we have to restrict access to services because it's going to, where Medicare is going to go bankrupt. Or no, no, we need Medicare for all. I'm like, no, <laughs> we need to think differently about the medical care we're delivering so we don't have to be restricting medical care. Because if we right. think about, literally, diabetes could be eliminated in a year in America. If everybody got the food delivered to them, and they ate it, which is you know, a big behavioral issue, and there's about, a lot about behavior change, then we literally could cure this problem almost overnight and save billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. So that, that's where I want to talk to, Dr., uh, to Congressman McGovern. Sorry, I, maybe you're a doctor. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> you should you. be, given how much you talk about health and healthcare and fish. <laughs> I, I think we can teach us a few things. <laughs> um, so, so, Congressman McGovern, I, I want to talk about this important bill because there, there's a Finally, a bill in Congress uh, that was introduced in September 2021 by you and other colleagues called H.R. 5370, Medically Tailored Home Delivered Meals 
Demonstration and Pilot Act of 2021. So you're actually just not saying, let's do this. You're saying, let's just study this. So like, that's a simple on-ramp. So tell us about the bill, why it's so important, what does it do, and what's the status of the bill now, and how we can help move this forward. Well, first of all, Mark, thank you for having me uh, on this Zoom call. And Prakash, it's great to see you again. And I can't believe I'm on a Zoom call with David Ortiz, but uh, uh, that'll impress yeah. my kids. And my yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah, we're all mutually starstruck. It's okay. Right, yeah. but, but, <laughs> Come on, Jim. You can have me with. You can have me whatever you want. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. my, uh, you know, look. I think I think we're, we're we're we all have kind of established the fact that for whatever reason there is a disconnect between our health care system and nutrition, and it makes no sense, but it exists, and it's hard to change things, even when we all know that that change is good. And so this is a pilot program. Uh, one is we want to make sure we get it right. Uh, but two, uh, we, we, we have to get people to buy into it. We have to make sure that this change happens. And this basically would uh, provide hospitals with the resources to be able to partner with outside organizations, uh, you know, to prepare and deliver, you know, medically tailored meals uh, to people um, who they think uh, should qualify for it. And look, I've been working with organizations like Community Servings in Boston, God's Love We Deliver in, uh, in New York City and MANA in Philadelphia and seeing some of the great work that they have done, but it's limited because there's a lack of coverage. Uh, and, um, and they've also taught me that good nutritious food can smell and taste as good as the food my grandmother used to make. Uh, so you know, good yeah. nutritious food doesn't have to taste lousy. Yeah, no. um, and, um, and you know, and look, I've also been working very closely with Dari Musafari and our friend uh, the yes. dean of the Tufts uh, Nutrition School. I mean, they've done tons of research on this, but we know food is medicine. Mm. Um, and we know that if we, you know, if we, if we provide uh, the authority for Medicare to help reimburse this, then we can get this thing going at a bigger scale. Uh, we can document the benefits uh, of this program. We can also document the savings. Yeah. I mean, there are lots of avoidable healthcare costs uh, that we're paying for now because of the lack of connection between health and nutrition. And you know, my grandmother used to say to me when I was growing up, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. It would annoy me, right? I wish she was still alive so I could say, you were right, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know, why is it that we can we will reimburse or pay for expensive prescription drugs when some when oftentimes uh, nutritious food is a better alternative? Yeah. Um, it just makes no sense. Um, and again, I've talked to lots of, you know, doctors and CEOs of hospitals, as you all have, you know, uh, and even people in the insurance industry, as you all have, and people say, yeah, that's, I get it, I get it, I get it. But then they don't follow up um, and help us kind of move forward. So this will get things moving. Um, my hope is, uh, again, the bill number is HR 5370, and um, it is now pending before the Ways and Means Committee. We are working with them to get it prepared, either for bringing it up on the floor individually or attaching it to a bigger bill that is a must-pass bill that will go to the president's desk. I feel very confident that we will get this done this year. Uh, That's and, amazing. Um, you know, and I know, you know, and we're not a, we're not encountering a lot of op uh, you know, major opposition other than people who are just like you know, who you know will say, oh, you know, I'm not sure we want to go down this road. We absolutely do want to go down this road. This is the way to keep people healthy. This is the way to control healthcare costs. And this is a way to provide people kind of the dignity and respect uh, that they, quite frankly, are entitled to. Science is way ahead of where a lot of our medical system is right now. Yeah. So let's yeah. let, let's embrace it. Actually, absolutely, Congressman. This is so important, the work you're doing. And and we know how powerful food is. And yet it, it's like this strange phenomena that we are not paying for what works. We're not paying for what's going to save money. We're not paying for what's going to get our population healthy and what's terrifying to me and i think i'm sure many of you on this on the zoom call know this but uh, out of tufts our friend dari mazafarian published a study that 63 percent of covid hospitalizations and deaths could have been prevented by a healthier diet Absolutely. and when you think about the implication of that the shutdowns the economic implications of it imagine if we didn't have to sequester lockdown and worry about dying from COVID because we were eating a healthy diet. That yeah. that alone should get everybody standing up and paying attention, including the President of the United States. I'm not sure why it hasn't or why it's not been a conversation, but Boris Johnson actually in 
the UK because he got COVID and he was obese. He's like, hey, this is a problem. I got it. I gave it to myself. And he eliminated, for example, all marketing of junk food to kids and, and a lot of other initiatives that were really amazing. So well, we're going to... Well, let me just say, many of us are working with the president right now on trying to get a White House conference on food, nutrition, health, and hunger up and running. Last time we did such a conference was 54 years ago. This yeah. is the kind of topic that needs to be discussed at that conference. You know, and I think all of us on this call, you know, will obviously be a part of, of that conference. I hope the president announces it in the next few weeks. Uh, but, you know, we need to understand the importance of food, uh, not only in our medical system, but in our educational systems, mm -hmm. you know, in our housing uh, you know, uh, systems. I mean, there's such intersectionality here with so many other issues. So this White House conference may be another opportunity for all of us to be able to boost up this message. Well, that's so exciting. What what are, what are the chances of that conference happening? Because it seems like we really need it. As you mentioned, yeah. it was over 50 years ago, and it set the stage for a lot of our nutrition policies for the last 50 years, but it hasn't been updated, and we have much bigger problems now. Yeah, no, I, I feel very good about it. I mean, every every hurdle that has been thrown in front of it as the reason why not to do it, we have removed. And in this last appropriations bill, I put $2.5 million into the bill to actually underwrite this conference. So the issue that somehow we need to find the money is no longer there. So That's I'm amazing. hoping in the next few weeks that they will announce it. And then we, I think all of us here need to get together working with Diary and, and others uh, to, to make sure that we are helping direct this conference in a way where things like medically tailored meals, among other things, are yeah. highlighted. And we have we have a plan to actually uh, implement a policy that will get us uh, to where we want to be. Well, that's so exciting. And I think the, the call to action for everybody listening is to tweet your local congressman to support this bill and click on the link, which provides you a letter that you can actually email your congressman. That'll be in the uh, and the notes uh, uh, sure. uh, along with this uh, Zoom. So I think it's so important that, that we take action. It's not that much work. It doesn't take much, but I, I think most of you don't think your voice matters, but it does. Your voice matters, your vote matters, and, and people listen in Washington. Imagine if everybody listening, we had millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people submitting that they want to support this bill, it will get the attention of the people that matter. So so really there, there's there's a way we can all play a role and be active. And I think this is really a call to action around taking a stand to do the right thing at the right time, because we're getting sicker and sicker and it's costing more and more. And this is a death spiral. And we actually can get out of it by, by using food as medicine and, and understanding the power of this incredible therapy that we've neglected in medicine for so long. I mean, I mean, Hippocrates figured out, he said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, but we kind of ignore that. But we need to come back to that. <laughs> We're going back to basics, Mark, with, with, the, with, with technology use, with better education, with payments that are following, right, and, and, and support from, from a financial perspective as well, and getting providers engaged. I think that's the other piece here, Mark, we should underscore. We do have some work to educate providers as well. And you said that several times, we don't learn about these things in medical school. How do we now weave this in, it's it's gonna take the ecosystem to get us there, but it's very exciting where we are. And, and, and it's also not just sort of eating healthy food, it's actually understanding how to prescribe food as medicine. I mean, not everybody gets the same drug for every disease. So there's specific diets and ways of eating that help reverse diabetes or help with Alzheimer's or heart disease or autoimmune diseases. And we actually know how to do this. This is the, the framework of functional medicine. We've been talking about this for a long time. The food isn't just calories, it's information, it's instructions, it's code, and it can change your biology with every bite. And so the quality matters and it's up this down the scale of the whole food system. We have to address this. And that's why this White House conference is so important. That's why this bill is so important. And I think the White House conference it, it could catapult us into the next 50 years of doing the right thing. I think the right voices will be there. I, I, I really hope that we can move this forward because it, it, it needs to happen. And I think everything, it depends on it in our country because our, our economic system depends on a healthy population, our productivity, our competitiveness globally, our national security, our kids' education. Right. I mean, it, it, the linkages are, are immense. It's not just about saving a few dollars on diabetes. It's all of it. So right. uh, thank you so much, Congressman Governor. And thank you, Poppy. I can call you that hopefully. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Prakash. It's been a great conversation. We're gonna share this on all our channels and, and we'll get the word out and we'll get the community activated to really make a big difference. So thank you so much for joining.